Hey everyone, Brian Zane here. Let's talk about the big news that swept social media on Monday from morning until night at the end of Monday Night Raw when it was confirmed after a very emotional in-ring segment, Daniel Bryan has announced his retirement from in-ring competition. When he went on Twitter Monday morning and said he was retiring, I was a little hesitant. You know, I was a little bit skeptical. I wasn't ready to go on social media and say hashtag thank you Daniel Bryan because I, you know, I think we as fans have been conditioned at this point to question when people go and say they're going to retire from wrestling. I mean, we've seen it before. Now, there have been some retirements that have gone through and were real, like uh, Edge's and then Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair's. Those were real. Uh, retirements, but then there's ones like Shawn Michaels back in 08 and Mark Henry uh, when he had the best going away speech you could possibly have, and he turned on John Cena. And then you know Daniel Bryan last year when he hinted at retiring and actually said he was going to be in the Rumble match. So for you know I, I humbly apologize for doubting the sincerity and the severity of this announcement. But I mean honestly, I, I was unsure. I mean, just to give you an idea of how how unsure I was of whether or not this is a work or a shoot, I actually wrote an alternate version of this editorial to talk about the fact that it was a work. So I humbly apologize for that uh, doubting. Now, I'm not going to come out here and say I'm the biggest Daniel Bryan fan. I loved his underdog story over the last few years. I loved the story that they had for him, whether it was intended or not, for him to have this huge groundswell of support and the fact they eventually relented. They had to change the main event to WrestleMania 30 just to acquiesce to what would have been a riot had the planned main event of Batista and Randy Orton for the title gone through. Uh, you know, it was amazing. It's one of those rare instances now in the overly sanitized, homogenized, overly scripted world of WWE today uh, where they had to change things because of what the fans dictated. Wow, what a huge shock that the fans actually determine, you know, who gets pushed and who gets championship. It's kind of crazy that in this world we live in today, Daniel Bryan was able to break through that, especially when you consider his size. But I think his diminutive size compared to everyone else he wrestled in WWE, I think played a huge part in it because even though he was being dwarfed by guys like Kane and Sheamus and all these different people in his career, you still saw the passion. You still saw him just, just killing himself out there every night. And I think that kind of passion was infectious among all the fans. And that's what led to what has been dubbed the Yes Movement. People can argue whether or not Daniel Bryan is overrated in WWE. And believe me, there are people in the comments section of my videos who still go on that argument. But you can't deny just how over he was and how much he resonated with the fans and how he could just control a live crowd and how his presence and the mention of his name could completely hijack a show on any given moment, any given Monday, any given Thursday. It was it was crazy to see what kind of effect Daniel Bryan had on the fans. I mean, like I said earlier, his, his redemption story at WrestleMania 30 was amazing. Had he not been plagued with so many injuries throughout his whole career, much less what he went through in WWE, uh, I think we'd be having a much different discussion about him and um, there'd be a much different story surrounding Daniel Bryan as opposed to what we have now. Uh, he wouldn't have been started with his championships, maybe. It's just a huge what if scenario with Daniel Bryan. I mean, we I'm glad that we saw what we did, what we did see of him. Uh, it's too bad that the career had to end like this at such a young, a relatively young age. Definitely a sad day for uh, the fans of Daniel Bryan. In Monday Night's speech, Daniel Bryan referred to having a more recent test on his brain that showed it wasn't as healthy as he thought it was, which is what led ultimately to his decision to retire. To me, that announcement kind of blows all the debates and the discussions in the months leading up to Monday Night's uh, revelation out of the water. When you consider this whole saga, one of the big sticking points of the whole Daniel Bryan saga the last several months was the fact that WWE's doctors were not clearing him, but every other independent doctor was. So it painted the company as kind of a bunch of incompetent boobs. But I understand, I understand the mindset fans had as to why they were mad that the company was not releasing him to wrestle. But from a purely legal standpoint, it totally makes sense that WWE would not clear him because they are currently embroiled in this massive concussion lawsuit with former talent. It would look bad enough if they released him to wrestle just in general, but if he were to get another concussion, that would be a huge legal and PR nightmare. And considering the style that Daniel Bryan wrestled, he put himself in harm's way to get concussed again. And I wouldn't blame the company for holding him back and not letting him wrestle. I mean, from a purely legal standpoint, I totally understand why they did it. 
Now, will Brian wrestle again for another company in the near future? I mean, he certainly has indicated in the past that he might. Uh, that was before this whole thing with the new uh, brain test came about. But even if that were the case, even if he technically were healthy enough to wrestle again, if a WWE contract is at all like, say, a contract for a major sports team, then it might be pretty difficult. For example, a lot of times when an NFL player retires with time left in his contract, and if he decides down the road he wants to get back into the game, he doesn't just re-enter the league with a clean slate and can just sign with whatever team he chooses. Uh, most often, the team that he retired with uh, still has the rights to his contract if there's time left on it. Now, Daniel Bryant's contract was frozen a few months ago due to his injuries. It's very similar to what happened when Rey Mysterio was injured a lot in WWE. So unless Vincent Mann released him of his contract upon retirement, then I think that the company might hold that against Brian if he were to wrestle or decide to wrestle or want to wrestle for New Japan or Ring of Honor down the line. But again, now that we know this whole thing about the new brain test, that might not be an option at all either way, even if Daniel Bryan wanted to wrestle. So after a full calendar year of rumors and stories and this long winding road, this absolutely crazy saga between Daniel Bryan and WWE with the fans caught in the middle of it all, it's finally reached a sad, disappointing end in Daniel Bryan's retirement. But obviously the most important thing is Daniel Bryan's long-term health. So it's a good thing that he got out when he did before he did any further damage. So obviously, a sad day, sad turn of events in the midst of all these other injuries we've talked about ad nauseum over the last few months on this show and everywhere else online for Daniel Bryan to retire. It's kind of a sad exclamation point to all of the stories we've heard about injuries this year uh, from other wrestlers. So I just want to say thank you, Brian Danielson, for giving a piece of yourself to the fans every night when you wrestled, for just going out there and laying on the line, kicking your own ass for the enjoyment and the entertainment of the fans, for giving the fans something to cheer for, for giving the underdogs in life something to cheer for when they saw you captivate audiences around the world in WWE and in Japan and everywhere in between. Thank you for an illustrious career, Daniel Bryan, and Godspeed. I want you guys to sound off in the comments section below. Talk to me about your favorite Daniel Bryan moments. Talk about his career. Talk about his emotional retirement speech on Monday night. Tell me if you thought at all this was a work like I did for half the day because that was really racking my brain all day. Let me know what you thought if you were in that camp as well. I really want to hear what you guys have to say. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to Wrestling With Regret. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.